This is the copywriting part, okay? Now, let's just admit it right now. Most people don't know what to say or how to say it or when to say it or how often to say it. You have to learn how to sell. When you can communicate a simple message in a way that proves that you are the authority on the matter and compels the listener to act in a manner that benefits them and act to the extent that they would not have acted were you not involved, then and only then can you write copy. If not, then hire someone who can. Hello, are you with me? Copywriting is salesmanship in print, can be leveraged to speak to the masses like we're doing here today and turns the entire conversation around in your favor, delivers desired results, and can be duplicated over and over and over. In my experience, I've seen and experienced fortunes being made with one single sales message delivered perfectly over and over. Sound familiar? AIDA, let's keep it this simple, okay? ADA, is a simple to follow acronym that you can use when you're writing your copy. A for attention, I for interest, D for desire, A for action. Generate attention, command attention, demand attention. All right, create some interest, get a little desire going with some greed, and then clear call to action. Look at this example. Here's an example of a simple little ad. This is a classified ad that made me a small fortune back in 2003. All right. Diabetics on Medicare. That's attention. If you ain't got diabetes and you ain't on Medicare, guess what? You don't care. Diabetics on Medicare. That's attention. You are entitled to diabetic footwear at no cost to you each year. Huh? Pique my interest. Claim yours today before the rules change again. Now I got desire going. What's my action? Call now to set up a free in-home fitting. That's it. That's it. The job of this ad is not to sell shoes. The job of this ad is what? To sell the call. Every single word is deliberately displayed to sell the call, not to sell the shoes. If you don't call me, I can't sell you, all right? Pretty powerful, but simple. When's the best time to start? Right now. Now is the best time to get this stuff going. Even if you already have a giant list, and you're actually sending marketing messages to that list, or maybe you're like the 5%. You don't have one single customer. You can't even spell FBA, no problem. Now is when you should get this going. The cost of inaction, my friend, is just too painful for most. Again, can you really afford to leave 66% on the table? But I'm gonna make mistakes. Listen. If you had a river of cash streaming by your house right now, would you just watch it pass by? Remember Jimmy Buffett? I said that on purpose. Warren Buffett says, opportunities come in frequently. When it rains gold, put out a bucket, not a thimble. Well said, Jimmy Buffett. Back to Margaritaville. Grab a bucket, buddy. Grab a bucket and scoop up your share of this cash. If your very first promotion is not ugly and embarrassing, then congratulations, you've waited way too long to get started. If you're not making mistakes, then you're not doing enough testing to effectively grow your business. But listen, you have to speak to your customers differently. Segmentation is the key here. Not all contacts are created equal. You have customers, that is, anyone who has made a purchase. You have prospects, anyone who's opted into your list. And you have frequent buyers, customers who purchased X amount of times. Here's some more ideas for segmentation. Products purchased. You can have a list of specific customers who purchased a specific product. What about cart abandonments? 
anyone who's seen your offer or your order form but did not take off action. Time since the last purchase? How old are you or how recent have you made a purchase with me? You have to admit that based on these six simple segmentations, we can't possibly speak to all of these segments of our list with the exact same tone, language, offer. We can't because they're not all equal. That's why we see amazing results. Here's a sample of a segmentation based on product purchased, where each product has its own respective list. Here's one based on the number of orders placed. Can you imagine this person on top who placed 47 orders with me? Those who purchase more often are treated differently. Duh. Here's a sample of how you can segment your list based on the most recent orders. Customers who ordered yesterday are much more valuable than those who ordered back in 2015. That's obvious. And finally, abandoned carts. If someone has seen your offer, entered the payment information, and then got cold feet and disappeared, well, guess what? They are much more valuable by multiples than someone who's just browsed your products and bought someone else's. Okay? You smell what I'm stepping in here? What about lifetime customer value? Customers who spend the most are more valuable than those who only buy a little. Why do you think you're here? Just kidding. These customers should get higher ticket offers, more offers, and more frequently while they're still hot. They should also get the best customer service. Then you have mobile versus desktop. I know you don't care, but your reader does. The structure and look and feel of the emails needs to be different. Traffic coming from mobile phones needs to see something that's friendly for a mobile device. Look, exact same email. One of them's designed for a browser or an email client on a computer or desktop. The one on the right, obviously designed for a mobile phone. You can't treat those the same. You have to include relevant content in the email. If you include content that's relevant to your customer's interest, guess what? You're gonna get a much higher op open rates, all right? A lot less unsubscribes, almost no spam reports, and they actually look forward to opening your messages. But what about the cadence? Oh my gosh, this is a lot to digest, I know. Cadence is the rhythm in which you send your messages. Here's what we like to use. Content, 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 then an offer. Or jab, 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 right hook. We give you content. We give you content. We give you more valuable content. And then we make an offer. You need to set the frequency and stick to it and always show up and be front of mind and never forget to give value. What about urgency? When you write an offer email, you must include urgency. Action must be taken within a certain amount of time. Otherwise, they're going to procrastinate. Without urgency, people will not act because they think they can just wait until later to make a decision. Always give them a very good reason to act right now and incentives. You must give people a good reason to act or reward them specifically. In many cases, we can simply use a promotional code for our Amazon products, but not too much. We like to stay within the 10 to 25% off for our promotional offers and no more than that. Otherwise, you're cultivating a list of cheapskates and we don't want that and you're losing money. You can also offer complimentary bundles, multi-unit discounts, and buy one, get ones or BOGOs. We call it the fundamental 14. Just happens to be like the F14 Tomcat. We create for every single one of our Amazon products. When you get on our list, we start off with 14 very specific emails with deliberate CTAs or calls to action. Now these emails are specifically designed to maximize our reviews maximize our rankings and increase our sales on Amazon. An organized follow-up sequence is so important here. Once you test and optimize your follow-ups, you need to be sure that no customers missed out by automatically adding new customers to the sequence. Here's a sample email flow and the positioning or the, or the goal, we'll call it, behind each email. The first two is about customer value, bad review prevention. The second three, three through four, review solicitation. 
Then we upsell for organic rankings and we cross sell for frequently bought together. Now, this flow may not fit your business. This is just one example. And email number one, look, we're gonna go through a couple of quick email samples of what we used in past campaigns. Now you can see in the goal in email number one has many, many goals, but it's only got one simple, clear call to action. What we're doing is we're setting them up for our next action step with specific language designed to move them to our next mutually beneficial step since they won't take the action on their own. Make sense? In email two, we're soliciting product feedbacks, okay? What do we do though? What do you do if your customer's not happy? It's simple. First of all, immediately remove them from your email list so they don't get the rest of the automated emails asking for a review. Secondly, you're gonna wanna overwhelm them with value so hopefully they won't leave any review at all. Maybe offer to let them keep the product with a full refund or send them a replacement, but also give them a bonus. Send them a replacement with a $10 Amazon gift card and a handwritten note. You get the idea, right? Email number three, it's just a reminder. Email number four, same thing. The goals are specific. And email five, remind the customer. Email six, you get the point, right? Your sequence should revolve around your brand and your goals for your business. You're loving this so far, aren't you? Who's loving this, Seth? John, I'm loving it, but a whole lot of other people are loving it too. We got uh, Roberta saying, I'm loving it. Well, the sometimes go to webinar doesn't load fast enough. It's uh, <laughs> I'm getting a lot of yeses, but it's not letting me read the names. Curtis, can you read those off? There we go. Jay, Enrique, Gerald, Mark, Terrence, Rick, Ricardo. And then it's doing it again. But anyways, lots of people are writing in, Sean. They're loving it. Go to webinar is just a little slow. Rome, oh, Robin, loving, Michael. Yeah. Rome, Robin, yeah. Cool. Thank you for the engagement. You've got fans, Sean. Don't worry. <laughs> cool. All right. So I'm loving this too. I'm having a great time, in case you can't tell. But I want you to wait. Hold everything just a second. Maybe after everything you've seen here, there's even a better way. What about a done for you solution by Post Purchase Pro? 